Taiho Wee Wei! Early stream again today. Busy night. So. What's up, Misha? And I'm, yeah. Sorry for random times, but it's all bonus stuff. Anyway, on days where I don't normally stream, it's all bonus. So you're just getting more. But I do realize it's annoying to not have a, a consistent start time. But Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if you want consistency, is always when the the episodes take place. The official episodes. Anyway, just addressing some outlier concerns. Um, uh, Misha, you got a prompt you want us to do? I could pull one of the form ones. All right, I can do that instead. You are Dylan. You are late for work by five hours. Your boss is really angry. What's up, Rust Box? Hi ho, wee way. You have been given a final warning, but he will not let it go. His face darkening as your blood boils in anger at the unfairness of life. He tells you to leave now or be fired on the spot. Wow. This boss is so pissed off. I this is what like a um, um, manager at a McDonald's who has everyone bail and he has to work the midnight shift. His face darkening as your blood bo oh wait, his face darkening as your blood boils in the angerness at the unfairness of life. He tells you to leave now or be fired at the spot. You don't like either option, and you demand that your boss just let it go. I'm sorry, sir. I'll be there right away. The door closes behind you with an ominous thud. It seems so loud in this empty office building. As you walk back through the hallways towards your car, you feel strangely exposed. What do we do? Are we a delivery driver? We, may, we must have a good reason we're late by five hours. I've slept through alarms and been late. I've been like, oh my god, it's one o'clock and I normally work at nine. And uh, I just go... Sorry. I don't know. It's when... You know what it happens? It's when it's just like you're so fed up with work and you really... Your body is telling you, just sleep through this shit. Have you ever been late by five hours? Yeah, one time. I had no excuse. And my alarm... I always have my phone alarm on. And it was like just going off. And... uh I knew I had to quit that job but at that point. I was like, I, I was like so tired and exhausted and not wanting to go to work that my body was just like, even though this fo phone is at full volume 
and the alarm is blaring, I'm just gonna have this guy sleep through this. The most I've been late to work is like 25 minutes. That was one time though, Misha. It's not like I'm regularly five hours late. I'm a very punctual person, but that was, uh, I hated my job and uh, yeah. And then I just came in after lunch and I was like, yeah, I don't have an excuse. I just slept through my alarm. And then uh, I didn't get really shit for it, but I'm sure, you know, people noticed. And uh, what can you do? What can you do? Find a new job <laughs> where people won't know that that happened. Oh, no. Here's what happens when you stay, though. No one speaks to you or even looks at you. Good point, Misha. You reach into your pocket that. for some cash to pay for parking when suddenly someone grabs hold of your arm from behind. Dylan. A voice calls out urgently. This better not be our boss. Startled, you turn around to see who has grabbed hold of you. Before you can answer, they drag you backwards down a flight of stairs and onto the street below where your feet land hard on concrete. You look up and see it is your boss wearing fight attire. Wearing fighting clothes. Your boss is so angry that you were late that he challenges you to a street brawl. This is the backstory of the Street Fighter that we never got. You laugh nervously, trying to calm him down but he keeps shouting at you. Let's get this over with. Let's he get it over with! His fist swings forward, catching you on the chin, sending you stumbling. Back against a wall. Wow. You realize he means business. And... You recall... All of the self-defense techniques taught to you by your master. You have never had any real practice with them though and you are scared shitless. Still, you stand your ground and meet his attack head on. You block his punch and throw a counter strike straight. <laughs> Back at him. What company do you work for? This seems like a stockbroker thing. Yeah, this is this is some straight up Wall Street shit. Some street brawling. Our boss is just so high on coke. He's like, we lost ten thousand dollars because you didn't show up. No, I'm gonna kill you. It's like, okay, Jesus. You don't know the official rules of a street fight, but you notice a lead pipe by a garbage can and pick it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, Misha. With a mighty swing, you hit your boss square across the jaw. Yeah. He staggers backwards, holding his face in pain. You feel exhilarated as you step forward and deliver another blow to his stomach. This time he doubles over, coughing violently, struggling to catch his breath. Yep. This time... Uh... You attempt to strike again, 
but the pipe is caught by Papa John, your boss's boss's boss. Papa John crumples the pipe like a piece of paper and begins and carries your boss to safety. Then he turns around ready to fight you. All the pizza's giving him super strength. You grab a heavy steel chair and prepare to defend yourself. Yep, come on! Papa John stops short and laughs. Come on, men. We're friends, aren't we? Okay, I don't know if this is to let my guard down. He holds out his hand and you take it. Alright, this is clearly... He's like... We're all buddies. You watched the training video? When I said we're family, I meant it. Papa. Now let me crush your bones with my bare hands. I, I got it next. This. What happens? Is Papa John going to betray us? Oh. Friend. We are not friends. Friends would never do this. <laughs> You're right. Papa John smiles. We are brothers then, right? You nod your head in agreement, feeling relieved that he doesn't want to kill you. <sighs> you walk away. You try and walk away. And Papa... John stops you. Papa John says, You haven't finished your work. For the day, where do you think you're going? Uh, home. I don't want to die. Your boss groans in pain, holding his face, and says, I've got to go home and call my wife. She won't be happy about you getting hurt, you say. You just want to go home. But Papa John forces you to finish your shift making pizzas. You are too scared to argue. And so you agree. As the night wears on, Papa John takes you out drinking with him. Ah. You drink more than you should and end up passed out on his couch. That's not a good sign. The next morning you wake up alone in your bed, your boss nowhere to be found. You go to work and notice that your boss is no longer employed with Papa John and that you are actually the new manager all your furniture is gone no no I think this is <coughs> Papa John's has a fight based uh, uh, <coughs> promotion policy you look around the store and see that things seem pretty normal. The customers are friendly and everything seems to be running smoothly. You decide to keep working there and soon enough you become popular with the staff and the customers. 
The month, the months fly by. And your numbers are up all across the board. You suddenly, you get another call from Papa John's, from Papa John, telling you to meet him for dinner. When you arrive at the restaurant you see that Papa John is dressed in fancy clothes and has a beautiful woman on each arm. Wow! This is our newest franchise owner, Dylan, Papa John says proudly. Wow! From lowly pizza worker to manager and now we're a franchise owner. I, I think you normally have to have like a million dollars or something to open a franchise. But we just <laughs> outright, I guess we won... I don't know how Papa John's works. Papa John's is different, I guess. Your eyes well, your eyes widen, and you want to cry tears of joy. But that would look weak, and so you get it together. And just say, thank you, sir. Imagine a Papa John's. <laughs> it's actually a pyramid scheme. Well, you don't have to, like, bring your pizza from home and then tell ten friends about your pizza. But that would be a damn shame. You bow deeply and smile at him. Oh, you don't need to be so formal with me, Papa John says laughing. You relax and enjoy the meal as Papa John regales you with stories of how he came to own the pizza chain. Okay. He's really, uh, getting really chummy with us. Papa John tells you all about his rise. To pizza stardom. Alright, this is Papa John's story. He was born into poverty in Italy and grew up selling pizzas to help feed his family. Okay. When he turned 20, he moved to America and opened the first Papa John's pizza location. Yeah? He started small and... Worked hard to build the company until eventually he owned 300 stores. Wow, that sounds like a complete lie. You are poor and in Italy. How did you get a visa? How did you come over to uh, America? You can't just come over to America. He bought the failing chain because it made great profits and his employees loved him. Oh, he bought another chain? After his death, the remaining owners decided to sell the company to the highest bidder. Oh, whoa, 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 he's dead? You find yourself wanting to ask Papa John questions about life, but you are afraid that he will think less of you if you do. You also are extremely curious. Papa John has died before? You think to yourself, then you notice Papa John has an interesting tattoo. Cult tattoo. It looks like a sword piercing through the heart of a wolf. Oh, fuck yeah. Dylan, Papa John says suddenly, breaking your train of thought, 
I want you to be my number one franchisee. Oh my god. Yes, of course. <gasps> I want you to run the company. What? You stare at Papa John, unable to believe what he just said. Me? Dylan John? Papa John Dylan? You have the talent and drive to make this company the best in the world. No. Papa John says, and you are loyal to me. just can't hold it in anymore and cry tears of joy and tell Papa John this is the best day of my life Papa John invites you over to his mansion to celebrate. You agree, and when you arrive, you notice the room, uh, you notice the lights are very dim, and it appears like the main room has been staged for some kind of ritual. There are candles everywhere and the marking and the tattoo, the sword piercing the heart of a wolf. And the insignia, insignia of a sword piercing through the heart of the wolf is painted on the floor. Then you hear Papa John's voice, Welcome, brother. Oh! A woman enters the room wearing only a black leather corset and thigh-high boots. She has long red hair and is extremely attractive. Wow! When you become owner and CEO, you change your name to Papa John. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's kind of like a... You're, you're becoming Papa John. The woman sits you down in a chair in the center of the room. Papa John yells out, Let the initiation ceremony begin! And 20 cloaked figures step out from the shadows and begin chanting a song about pizza. Come on, give us a song. All right, I'm going to read this. Our pizza, our dream. We're going to take it to the top to make a pizza that will blow them all away. And they just keep chanting it over and over. Our pizza, our dream. Our pizza, our dream. Papa John walks up to you and kneels down, taking your hands in his. Papa John says... May the marinara be with you.
and slit your wrists. Your blood fills the room and the sexy woman brings in a large cooking pot filled with pizza sauce. This is either very elaborate prank or this is real. And begins to pour it into you. No! The woman then pulls out a knife and slices off your penis. I didn't realize that was required. May the pepperoni be with you. <laughs> She says and pours hot pepperoni into you. <laughs> the blood, our pepperoni has been replaced by actual pepperoni. The woman pepperoni. brings in a large oven mitt and holds it against your face, smothering you with pizza. Oh, God, what did she say to that? The woman continues pouring the sauce and pepperoni into you. She stops and looks at you. Smiling wickedly. May the sausage be with you. She says and covers your mouth with a slice of meaty Italian sausage. You lie there. Covered in pizza toppings. The ceremony is complete and you have finally transformed into <laughs> a real papa john yes you are now ready to accept your destiny you look around and notice that the woman is gone as well as the 20 cloaked figures. Oh my god. You stand up and walk towards the painting on the wall. Oh, what's... What's the painting of? Oh! As you get closer, you see that it depicts the exact same scene that you witnessed earlier tonight. Wow, it's the ceremony of the Papa John's! Can I get my penis back? No. It is pepperoni. And it is for everyone to enjoy now, Misha. You reach out and touch the sword piercing through the heart of a wolf. The blade is warm to the touch. You go to Amir. And see that you have... Uh, you have become Papa John himself. You smile at the reflection of yourself and say, Well, Papa John, what are we going to do next? What are we going to do next, Papa John? And with that, Papa John turns and smiles at you. Papa John tells you, Now you are ready to take over the world. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's how it's done. It's all an evil, culty organization about Papa John. Woo! That's amazing. I, I think we got we have to do another story. I, I wanna leave it like this. Becoming Papa John. That's just make this movie please, yes. Th this that's amazing. Thank you, Misha, for that prompt. Uh, Rustbox, are you still here? I could do your prompt. Or we could do another... Or, Misha, if you have another prompt and you want to type it in. I'll do Rustbox's prompt 
if he does uh if he's here i'll do your i'll, I'll do back-to-back -back misha prompts if uh he's not oh what's up anime anime you got a prompt yeah okay wait anime's got a prompt hi ho we wait anime early stream early exit too I think I only have time for one more story. But let's do it. Uh, thank you, Anime, for this prompt. You are the great Fernando, a mischievous magician. One evening, you're performing magic tricks for a rough crowd. The first few tricks don't impress the crowd. You say, ladies and gentlemen, I've saved my last best trick for last. Not a very good showman. Normally you open with like your second strongest and end with your... I guess you... No, no, I guess you would have your uh, your closer. Okay, I said my best trick for last. You magically transport turds into the pants of the guy in the front car. The crowd bursts into laughter and applause. That's your best? Oof. <laughs> That's nice to be, Shiles. We could save that for next time. After that, your audience is hooked on your tricks. Hooked? They beg you to perform them again and again. That's the end of the show! Your fans become obsessed with the idea of having their own magical trunks filled up by yours truly. Ew! Yuck! You leave the stage and tell everyone they'll just have to wait. For your next show. You become. Known. Nationwide. And. Become. You become known nationwide. And. Every. Talk show. Wants to have you on as a guest. Fame and fortune is a dream for most people. Yeah. The number of people who want to meet you grows larger than what can be accommodated in your hotel room. <laughs> in order to accommodate more guests, you rent out an entire convention center. Damn. As it turns. Poop con. Out. The most popular trick is still pissing someone off and then making them do something crazy like jumping. Oh, uh, like jumping what? Whoa! From a tower or being forced to eat shit. Whoa, 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 whoa. So now there's a waiting list for anyone who wants to get pissed at. There's even a website devoted entirely to listing upcoming dates when magicians will. Appear in public and piss somebody off. Wow! Pissedoffmagicians.net You are scared by how many people hate you. But you, uh, you do it for the fans that love you. At the convention center, you are having a great time meeting all of your fans until one man enters and until dot 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 one day. One day. The man was standing before her in the middle of a large convention center. He had dark hair and eyes and his skin looked tan. His clothes were simple black slacks and a white shirt. The man was no fan. And in fact, was a fanatic of one of the hate groups 
against magicians. You saw the man as soon as he entered and the conference center and knew he was going to be trouble. He had come to see you perform and you could tell he wanted to disrupt your performance somehow. The man moved closer to the stage where you were about to begin your show. Hey, the man said loudly enough so everyone around him heard him. Okay, Hecklin, right at the start of the show. He waved his arms wildly trying to get your attention. People turned towards the commotion and began to gather around the man and some started to laugh at him. You decided to try a new trick. You made this heckler disappear. Everyone applauded. The man was confused and upset that he couldn't be seen. Oh, you said. Well, sorry about that. But I'm sure you understand why I did it. What? You tell the man that he is now invisible and... Invisible to everyone. Except him. Except you. Any attempts... You say, now, let me introduce myself. Oh my god. My name is Great Fernando. I am a magician and I have performed for thousands of people all over the world. Now, you can either go away and never bother me again, or you can stay here and watch my show. That is the ultimate threat. Or you could be invisible forever and I'm never going to change back. What's it gonna be? Do you want to sit down and watch or do you want to run away? The man didn't answer. Instead, he walked back towards the exit of the convention center. The man went about his life cursed that no one he lo no one could see him see or hear him. The next night he returns to the convention center and begs you to change him back to normal. He's going to get his revenge? How? As an invisible guy? You agree, but only if he agrees not to bring any friends or family members to the convention center anymore. You are very careful with your magic tricks because you know the man will return to cause trouble. The man promises you he will not return and you change him back. Then you say, for my next trick, I'm going to make Jason from AIPD like birthdays. Dun, dun, dun. Even magic couldn't do it. <laughs> the man laughs and says, 
Yeah right. How are you going to do that? Just watch. You make Jason disappear and reappear. The man is amazed. Then you say, now, for my next trick, I'm going to make Jason from AIPD. <laughs> like Christmas. I like Christmas already. No, it's... No, you don't. You can't do that. <laughs> or it's like, I don't really like Christmas. And he goes, it's just that easy, folks. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I can. Watch me. Watch me. You make Jason disappear and reappear. The man is amazed. You continue to surprise the man with your tricks and after several days he finally leaves. You ask the man his name and he tells you it's Marcus 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 How dare you interrupt my show? I was about to reveal my newest trick. You can't just walk up to a performer and start talking nonsense. Yeah, you can't. I'm in the middle of a show. You can't just walk up to me. Oh, wow. You're lucky I don't kill you. Wow. If you ever show your face at another convention center, I will find you and destroy you. Holy fuck. Sincerely. Great Fernando. We went super aggro. P.S. Don't come back to the convention center. Marcus returns to the convention center. Hoping to make amends. But before Marcus can ma uh, make his case can explain to you why he has returned you use your magic on him great Fernando is a psycho you make him invisible. Well, Marcus says. You make him visible again. Holy shit. Marcus says. That's better, you say. You tell Marcus that he can come back to the convention huh. center whenever he wants. That's strange. We've completely flipped on him. Marcus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Marcus goes home and is excited at this new information. He gets ready for bed and then he notices that he no longer has a penis. Is this the price he paid for defying the great Fernando? Chapter 3 Rune Magic your first audience with the Great Wizard comes a few weeks later. You arrive at the convention center and immediately spot him. You notice that he looks much older than you remember. Are we just gonna get, forget about Marcus and his no penis? Oh, Marcus is coming back for revenge. He is walking slowly with a cane. You see him hobble over to the side of the convention center where you will be performing. You walk up to him and greet him. 
Hello, great wizard, you say. Poor Marcus. Marcus bursts into the room. Furious. You laugh and say, Oh, Marcus, you will never learn. But then you notice Marcus is holding a demonic spell book and is covered head to toe in blood. Before you can say another word, Marcus curses you with Come on, what is he curses? What, what's the curse? Anybody? Any takers? The words. Bane of magicians, may your powers grow to consume every ma magician and destroy their souls. Oh my god! What the fuck you say is you feel your body begin to transform. You become a dark shadow. Your clothes fall off and you stand naked in front of Marcus. What the hell are you doing? Marcus asks. No, no, we're switching that, right? What the What the hell are you doing? Marcus asks. What the hell are you doing, you ask? I'm a demon, Marcus says. That makes more sense. Oh, it's just the beginning. My soul is being consumed by your evil magic. And you are going to help me stop it. Why should I help you? Because I can give you anything you want. Oh, interesting. I thought he was just going to turn him into a demon that eats magicians. And also, if you don't, this evil will destroy all of the magicians of the world. You agree to help Marcus rid himself of the demon but you are not able to do much as a dark shadow you ask the great wizard for help we need to get some light use no pressure or anything, yeah. Hey, what's up, Booz? You cast your shadows out into the convention center and they begin to glow. The light illuminates the entire area. There, you say. All of the lights explode. And a an army of shadow monsters erupt into the convention center and overwhelm the great magician or the great wizard hail to the shadow king marcus screams marcus do you want our help or are you are you like 50 50 or is this all a ploy the monsters swarm around you and try to attack you, but you are too powerful for them. This isn't working, 
you say. Well, that's obvious. You make yourself invisible and try to escape out the back. Finally sleeping in my own bed again after a week of slumming it in the guest room. Oh, what's up, Biz? Yeah. Were you, like, super sick or were you just, like... I hope you didn't get COVID or anything. And if you did, I hope you were feeling good. Uh, better. No, wait. Marcus shouts. You turn around and see Marcus holding a dagger in his hand. <gasps> you grab the blade with your own hands and plunge it into your heart. I'm sorry, you say. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's good then. Had to re redo the entire room floorboards and all. Seppuku, yeah. Good old home improvement. Yeah, last year, me and Alan were, like, without a kitchen for, like, most of the year. It was... It sucked. That will show them. Yeah, exactly. You explode into... A ball of light and cleanse the uh, conference center of all the shadow beasts. Marcus looks to return to normal except for his penis which is still gone. Still missing. I'm so glad you're okay, you say. Thanks, Marcus says. But now I have to go back to my old self. You embrace Marcus and say goodbye. You laugh and try to heckle Marcus as he leaves. Don't worry, I'll be waiting for you when you get back to the convention center. <laughs> he knows he's coming back! Nobody learned anything in this story. Chapter 4 A Demon's Tale you laugh and shake your head at Marcus' parting words. Oh, Marcus said that, I guess. <clears throat> Alright. I think we could do one more story before I gotta leave. So, let's do... Let's do... Magic Convention Center. Heckling magic. At... A convention center. Heckling a magician. We'll always have Hawaii, yeah. <laughs> Alright, one last story. Uh, and I'll use a prompt from Biz. Thank you, Biz. <clears throat> Uh, you are Daniel Briggs, a 20-something man who's got a date with someone way out of his league. As you take a sip of coffee and head out, uh, as you take a sip of coffee and head out, when suddenly you wake up in the bed the, uh, the night before the date, you realize that you're stuck in a loop, unable to attend the, the date of your dreams. Oh my. You're so close to something good, but... And she's just like, tomorrow, tomorrow.
Tony zones. Yep, exactly. Oh, well. Until one day you find yourself on top of her as she moans into your mouth. Woohoo! Your cock is rock hard from this erotic dream and it seems like every time you fall asleep or wake up after having sex you have more intense fantasies about her. But it isn't real. You need to find a way to break this curse. So you can go on living your life instead of this lie. Will love conquer all? Or will the evil witch win again? Oh, it sounds like we pissed off the evil witch. A fatal flaw in all horror movies. Don't piss off the evil witch. Just let her do whatever she wants. So I was thinking. Sam said excitedly as he looked at me expectantly waiting for my opinion. You've had this conversation at least a thousand times already. You decide to make this infinite day interesting and pull out a quadruple barreled shotgun filled with poison bullets we should get married he stated matter of factly without batting an eye i mean we're good together right your mind races trying to think of a reason why this would be bad. Wow, we just had to intimidate the person into... And yeah, moans into your mouth. Oh! Hey, stop doing that. Don't kiss me and then moan into my mouth. I don't know who... I don't know what porno you saw that they did that, but, uh... I don't like it. Stop moaning into my mouth. <laughs> yeah, Misha, it's like a naturally... Or it's a... A hellish existence. Um, I heard that Bill Murray, I don't know how true this is, but I'm going to spread it around anyway. I heard that, uh, Bill Murray and Harold Ramis got in a big fight because Harold Ramis wanted to, uh, make it a serious movie and Bill Murray didn't, or maybe it was the other way around. And anyway, they, they differed on what they thought Groundhog's Day should be. And, uh, uh, they were, like, never the same after that. They had a big falling out. The more you know. You convince Sam to marry you. Right away. You rush to the courthouse. And you rush to the courthouse. Get married. And try to consummate the marriage and try to there's a really good Groundhog Day sequel that's a VR game ooh I I'm intrigued what's it called Biz?
to make it official. That's what I'm trying to say. The judge says they'll do it immediately, but there's no priest or witnesses, so you have to wait while Sam finds some. After almost two hours of waiting, you see him walking down the street with a guy carrying a guitar case. You are married and share. You are officially married and share a passionate kiss with Sam. But before you can return home, the day restarts itself. Damn it! You know what you have to do. The next day you go to work as usual and once again end up in bed with Sam. This time though he surprises you by getting naked and sliding into your ass. <laughs> oh my god! Groundhog day like father like son. Oh. Well. Oh, that sounds very interesting. You You notice something you notice something new up here in your room. Corey from AIPD's clothes, which are covered in groundhog piss. This is unusual. It appears that Sam has been fucking her for the past few days as well. You grab your phone and call Corey, hoping she'll give you advice on how to break this curse. She tells you that she doesn't believe in magic or curses, so it must be a dream and just enjoy being fucked by yeah, Sam. I don't get it, uh, anime. It must be Corey from AIPD must be like making it a woman. Because if we just say Corey, I think it thinks it's a guy. But Corey from AIPD just must be like skewing the algorithm to and just enjoy being fucked by Sam oh no you finally get home after a long Not day really. at work can you go straight to bed where you find Sam Corey, waiting for you I've never smile. met a female Cory before you can say anything he kisses you passionately and slides inside of you Then it hits you. Maybe not having sex is the way to break the curse. The day repeats. And this time, you go the whole day without having sex or masturbating. Or even masturbating. It is very challenging, but you manage to d manage to handle it. You go to sleep and you pray that the curse is broken. Always ensure pleasure dominance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you walk into the bar wearing your best suit and tie. You've got your hair slicked back and your face clean shaven. We broke the curse! You're ready for this date. She walks over to you and gives you a big hug. Woo!
Her breasts push against your chest and you feel her firm ass pushing into your crotch. You hold her tight and look into her eyes. You both laugh and embrace each other. I'm glad you decided to come tonight. Just as her words hit your ears, you explode in your pants with delight. You try to hide it, but you are just so happy. Oh wow, that was great. She laughs and hugs you again. Okay, she's not. In, it's not a deal breaker for her. This woman is marriage material. Let's get out of here. You say as you lead her out of the bar. <laughs> yeah. Does she have a front ass? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love a woman with a good front ass. You know, her thighs just you know bulge out. <laughs> You drive her home and fuck her in every position imaginable. I would just say that's a that's a great ending, yeah. What did we learn? Hold out for sex until you can't hold anymore. Hold out for sex just one day, and then you'll get all your wildest dreams. And then fuck the woman of your dreams. Or man. For the rest of your life. <laughs> you lie. You lay in bed. And look over. To the woman. Of your dreams. And realize. You don't. Even. Know her name. She tells you her name is Samantha. Samantha. You stare at her beautiful body and wonder what her pussy tastes like. Pussy? You want to eat her out so badly. Oh my god. You roll over and go to sleep. <laughs> what? You wake up in bed with Samantha and come in her mouth. That's not nice. That's not a good morning thing. I would hate that. Samantha disappears. You go to work and you spend the entire day dreaming about eating her pussy. You can't stop thinking about her and come in your pants every time you think of her. Wow. You get home and you go to bed. When you wake up, you are shocked to see that the day has begun to repeat again you are now married to samantha and you are miserable <laughs> i'm too horny to be awake anymore i'm gonna go to bed immediately you start to think about breaking the curse you could just go back to your old life but what if you never get another chance with her You decide that in order to break this curse, you are going to have to. Whoa. Fuck Samantha until she comes. It's impossible. You take a shower and dress in your best suit. You get into your car and drive to Samantha's house. You ring the doorbell and a gorgeous woman answers. Hi. I'm Sam. She smiles. Hmm. 
You tell her who you are and she invites you in. You follow her into the kitchen and she offers you a drink. No thanks. You find this weird sex kink of Samantha wanting to have sex with a traveling salesman. Weird. But you continue to play along. <laughs> she hands you a glass of water and you sit down at the table. She sits down opposite of you and asks you what brings you to her door today. You explain everything about your job and the curse that has been placed on you. She hits you in the shoulder and tells she hits in the shoulder you say actually ma'am I am a traveling salesman and I am here to sell you a new Blank. Product. She laughs and says, okay, okay. Let me see the stuff you brought with you. You hand her one of your sample boxes. <laughs> You've already done that three times before. Oh! Samantha, the box, the boxes contain one box of lube, another box of condoms, a third box of lubricated wipes. <laughs> that is smart. If that doesn't exist already, lubricated wipes. Because if you just get a jar, it's just like, how much or how little do I use? Is... But if it's on a wipe, you just use one wipe, right? Well, that looks amazing. Do you have any more? You tell her that you do. You sell her the entire truck filled with sex products. And notice you are running out of time to break the curse. Sam grabs your hand and takes you to the bedroom. You have to fuck harder and faster than you ever have before if this is going to work. This is a perfect date, exactly. You strip off your clothes and toss them onto the floor. Sam climbs on top of you and starts to ride your cock. Oh God, this feels so good. You moan. You stare at the clock and wait for Sam. And you stare at the clock and then quickly look back to Sam. She begins to moan and before you know it she has come come she has came and broke the curse
you two laugh and fall asleep together. You wake up in bed with Sam and you both laugh and kiss. You did it. I did you it. the curse. I broke the curse. You both laugh and embrace each other. Next time on 50 Shades of Groundhog Day. Then you get another curse. There's always another curse that's out there. You wake up in bed with Samantha and cum in her mouth. Well, that's not usual. You tell her you are going to be late for work. You get dressed and head out the door. Gotta go! You arrive at your office where you discover that all of your co-workers have gone home sick. Yeah, we didn't even brush our teeth. We just went to work with a load in our mouth. Or, I guess it's in our mouth. <laughs> We're just like, here's breakfast. Gotta go! Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, see you tomorrow. I'll be on. Yep. Tell your step magicians to subscribe. Tell your step, uh, your step hecklers, your step, uh, sex cursed maniacs. And, uh, submit your prompts. Actually, if you want to submit your prompts, I'm, I'm going to be retiring the form soon, I think. Because it's starting to act up a little bit. So, if you want to submit your prompts, join the Discord. And go to hashtag or uh, the prompts channel and submit your prompts. I'm gonna be plugging the Discord more and more. And the submit a prompt page will uh, also point to the Discord. So uh, join the Discord, submit your prompts, and see you tomorrow. Bye, ho, wee, way, everybody. <laughs>